My name is Kavi Arya. I am faculty in the computer science department at uh, IIT Bombay. I would like to share with you uh, some thoughts and perhaps a direction. You are being taught about research methodology, how to do research. What I am going to talk to you about is how to find research problems. How to find research problems. And the happy thing is that in our country at the moment, we are surrounded by so many problems that finding a research problem is not a problem. And the wonderful thing is that that opportunity belongs to us. We own those problems, which is a lot actually because people are looking for problems abroad all the time and they realize that many of the problems are in the developing countries. So they want to come here and solve those problems. Right? We should upstage them and solve our own problems. And typically I find much of the technology that we import from abroad, we are paying roughly about 8 to 10 times for that technology than what we should be paying. We have been doing projects for industry and for the military and things like that. And typically some rig that costs about 2.5 crores to buy from say Israel, something is not rocket science, it is reasonably straightforward which talented faculty and students at engineering colleges can build themselves. 2.5 crores. And I've often come to a conclusion after analyzing that, that if the same thing was done by local uh, talent, we can do it for about one eighth to one tenth of the cost. Okay. So how do we find these problems? I'm going to leave you with another question, then I'll show you a possible way to generate answers to this through our Eantra project. Consider one thing. It's taken India 60 years in 2007 to become a trillion dollar economy, trillion dollars, thousand billion dollars economy. And that's when abroad people look towards you for markets, for coming to sell things to you. You're a rich man, right? And you have the money and they want to sell things to you. Whether it is foreign direct investment or new IKEA shops or what have you. It's going to take us only six to seven years to become a two trillion dollar economy. That means that none of us know what the meaning of that is because I mean we have grown used to such slow evolution in this country that what has happened since independence to now is going to happen from 2007 to 2013 and then after that it is going to take two to three years to become a three trillion dollar economy. So we are growing at an exponential rate which is similar to that of China. Only we are 10 years behind. Now what is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is that there is going to be a huge demand. There is going to be a tsunami of consumption, of malls opening, of products being developed, of things being sold to you, of services being in demand and stuff like that. And who is going to build those things? Who is going to build those products, those services and all the new technology which we need at a fraction of the cost of if we were to buy it from abroad. I will bet on it, it is going to be some talented student of yours, right? as much as any IIT student who seem to be going into banking jobs and abroad, many of them. It is going to be your guys who are going to come and do MTechs at IIT Bombay or go straight into entrepreneurship from their own colleges and we need to use that product if you like more fruitfully and, and productively and we are going to show you how. As you know we are running this project called eYantra if you uh, see my slide here. This comes out of years of teaching embedded systems in IIT Bombay. Embedded systems are machines where you do not see a computer that is all and we found that robotics fits very well into this. Right? So we want to trigger a robotics revolution in the country based on stuff that we have developed. We want to create engineers who can build complex machines. Now what are these complex machines? They could be jhadukatka machines, they can be dishwashing machines, they can be street cleaning machines, they can be anything. And if you go back, how do we plan to do it? By designing and deploying robots, by conducting workshops for faculty and students, by partnering with uh, colleges creating lots of open source content and we found that we have been trying to give workshops for
for the last two years and we've done about 60 workshops and trained 1600 faculty and students. But a great way to actually move ahead is to have a competition, national robotics competition. So this is what I shall speak to you about and think about how you can use this to motivate your students to do something interesting. We tell faculty, two minutes I have, we tell faculty wherever we go that explore the industry around you. Whether it is the weaving industry, whether it is the textile industry, whether it is the horticulture industry, whether it is the auto components manufacturers in Coimbatore and things like that. Think of the problems that they have in automation in their factory or to make various processes more efficient. There might be a robotic component to it, which maybe you with your students can address and solve. That is how you get a research problem if you like, by finding problems around you and solving them. This is the platform that you have, but I shan't bore you with too much detail. You can go to our website and, uh, and uh, have a look at it, e-yantra.org. There's a lot of open source. This, consider this robot as a pen. The pen is not so interesting as the stories you will write, the interesting research you will do with that pen. Okay, so this, this pen, if you like, supports a lot of different uh, languages, C, Estrel, Luster, SCADE, open source environments like Scilab, rich communication uh, uh, is available on this and we have a simulation engine which is all open source. So you can do very interesting things. So what we are urging you through this competition of ours is to take uh, problems, right? We take real world problems around us and solve them in the small and create a culture. These are variants of the robot. This is how a class is. Uh, a laptop is shared with two students and a robot is also uh, shared. So this is what you, uh, we would like you to do. We want your students to register at eyantra.org e for this competition. We launched it on uh, the 15th of June and until uh, the 15th of July, we have our site open. Selection is through an online test. Selected students will be brought to IIT Bombay and trained. We want to make 120 teams of four students each. And we will divide them up into teams to compete to solve one of six themes. One is a pothole filling theme, the other is a, a cleaning theme, the other is a fruit picking theme and so on. We will supervise them, we'll bring them here, train them, then supervise them for 12 weeks online and then choose three winners from each of these themes and then get them to IIT Bombay to take part in a live competition in TechFest. Okay. So this is the way ahead, motivate and mentor your teams to come to us, host an e-yantra workshop where we'll come and we'll uh, train your uh, faculty and students also if you like, set up e-yantra labs, we can help you with that also and we want your faculty perhaps next summer to attend through the same infrastructure and embedded uh, systems uh, course, right and to seed this all through our e-yantra uh, project. So this is a picture of the first lot of robots that went out, okay and this is what Eantra purports to be all about, engineering a better tomorrow. And we feel that with your collaboration and by, by motivating your students, we'll be able to seed some very interesting research ideas at your colleges.